In today's video, I make a small hole into the fuselage. I remove engine covers. In this case, why not to replace engines entirely? I make a new river lines and panel lines. And minor shading with an airbrush. Also, I paint tiny labels with a paintbrush. And lastly, I create the realistic holographic kind side. Hello fellow modelers, you asked for a modern aircraft model, so why not something crazy like Warhawk? I chose Italaric kit because it's relatively accurate and has lovely details. The plastic is softer than I am used to, but I hope it will be processable. The first plan was to make this model straight out of the box, but it went slightly wrong. So let's make minor modifications. There are wrong shapes of engine fans, so I printed new ones. Ok, not only fans, but the whole engines. Also, I purchased electronic boxes from Black Dog and lovely metal bars from Edart. I am cutting out plastic with a microelectric drill and carbide milling cutter. I do not need to preserve the plastic covers, so it is easy to make a large hole. You can carefully remove residual plastic with a cutter, however, better is ordinary hobby knife. I only forgot that the set is designed for academic kit, so I didn't expect it some dimensions issues, but I should. I am gluing resin part with a super glue, because glue for plastic is useless here. The gap is 2mm, therefore quite significant in 72 scale. I use as a filler two component epoxy party. It is easy to process and is quite solid when it dries. And I use water to make the party less sticky. I am not describing panel lines, but removing the whole leading edge. The razor saw is good tool for straight cuts. The shape is slightly different again, so it is essential to modify it for Italare kit. The worst part of this kit is engine fan. Here is the original one and here is from the kit. Nice, but the shape is wrong. Therefore I purchased a detailed 3D model, modified it and printed it. It has most wires and few lines done, but the best is that the blades are separate and you can see through them. So it remains to modify the kit. The engine covers are made from two parts and separating them with a razor saw is straightforward. And try not to destroy them because we need them. It is hard to see engine if you are not looking from the bottom side. Therefore I decided to make one engine unmounted entirely. In the end I will place it next to the model. The internal construction is very minimalistic and easy to do. For example, I only printed circles with holes. Or you can use it as a template if you want. The last step is to fill gap between the parts. I use my favorite epoxy party again. I did a better job with measuring this time, so the engine fits perfectly. Only the exhaust needs to be slightly shapened. I have this lovely blueprint from local modeling magazine Modelage. It has all rivet lines and details. So let's do the most time consuming work, describing pan lines and riveting. Honestly, you do not need some expensive rugs, like Tamiya engraving blades or so. It would help if you have only cheap razor saw or trumpeter panline engraver for deeper lines around flaps. The A10 has a crazy amount of rivets. It is nothing like my recent Era Cobra. The major problem is that the plane has complex shapes and it is essential to make the rivets on the wings and around engines before the assembly. Otherwise, you will have a little space to do them. The 
very fat are raised above the surface. However, it is not a problem on the fuselage, because the real plane has raised rivets like on a steam locomotive. On the other hand, wings were flat, so we need to do something with that. Thus, I am smoothing them with a rough 300 grit sandpaper. The rough is better, because you will not clog the rivets with the dust so easily. In the end, you can make symmetrical details with an ordinary needle. I already made details on the wings and fuselage, but where is the cockpit? Here. But first, I must remove details, because I will replace them with better ones. The EDAR detail set is not essential, but has few handy parts, like repair parts for holes in the wheel well or new surface details. The plane has no landing gear, so do not forget to add counterweight. Recommended is 30 grams, but 20 should be enough. I use lead from old battery. I removed all details in the cockpit section and replaced them with metal ones. I filled fuselage seam lines with a flexible super glue and Tamiya party. The essential step is now rescribe pan lines and make new rivets. A good trick is to scan the blueprint, make a few copies and cut it into small pieces. Now it is easier to measure the lines. The wings do not fit perfectly, so removing a little bit of plastic is good. The engine fits nicely, so no work here, but the elevator not so much. It is a little bit raised above the surface. However, if you remove the plastic from the opposite side of the elevator, you can achieve better results. Good and cheap material for tubes is hypodermic needle. The edge on engines should be sharp, not round. It took some time to fill or repair shapes, but I expect more problems after primer, which will reveal imperfections. The surface with rivets looks nice, however I found only partially covered seam lines and dust particles. Essential is to clean all of them. I open engines, consequently I cannot install rockets and bombs. The tiny problem is that there need to be structural details. I am making holes with micro drill bits. It is not 100% precise, but better than flat plastic. I like using cheap and homemade tools. For example, you can bevel hypodermic needles and use them as a circle puncher. And some more complex shapes I am doing with a needle and metal templates.
it seems that every single part of the kit I modified or replaced. Unfortunately, gears are not an exception. You can, for example, drill out landing lights, add wires and remove ugly moon lines. The A-10 is heavy aircraft, so I'm flattening the tires with a flat nail file. It is easy modification and the result is 100% better. It is also good to restore tire pattern with a razor saw. I forgot to make new panel lines and rivets near the engine. There is not a lot of space for a razor saw, so I use Tamiya engraver for small and hardly accessible details. Ok, let's paint this monster. The primer has almost the same shade as the camouflage, so I'm spraying shading directly on primer. I use for shading dark grey, highly diluted acrylic paint and low pressure of 15 psi. Try to avoid making this effect too pronounced, otherwise you will need more layers to unify it. As you can see, I am making pan lines and sharp edges darker. The surface looks dull, so all this artificial shading will make it more attractive. If you made the rivets, then this step is much easier. Each rivet line is like a guideline for you. I made the surface darker, so let's make it even less uniform with a light grey. In addition, you can use light grey to make some panels, like flaps, more pronounced. Oh, I look at the photo documentation and realize that some sensors are missing. I am making new ones from styrene boards. Sorry for that. Let's get back to the painting. The last layer of the airbrush painting is to unify shading with a camouflage grey. Try to use again highly diluted paint. You shouldn't need to cover all the previous paint job. The bottom side of the aircraft has a fake cockpit. Now the funny part, details. The A-10 is exciting plane, but the grey not so much. Luckily I made a few extra details which are painted with a zinc chromat green. It is 72 scale, so electronic boxes are the size of a 1 euro coin. Therefore, it is good to have a sharp and good quality paintbrush. 
I use the Da Vinci with a natural hair. And also suitable paints. I have acrylic Vallejo or Citadel. And the last step is dark brown wash for artificial shading. Precisely, I do not use wash, but red brown filter, Citadel Earthshade. You cannot wipe it out after drying, but it is great for small details. The same detail work is with the engine. I do not have a zinc chromat green for paintbrush. However, if you dilute Tamiya acrylic with a isopropyl alcohol, you can apply it with a paintbrush easily. The General Electric engine has a lovely red pipes which is a nice detail, however, it is shame that it will be partly hidden under engine covers. The last step with the airbrush is varnish. I am applying a smooth layer with a super clear free. This varnish is very dense, so it is essential to dilute it with a four parts of a leveling thinner. I must mention that the best part of the kit is decals. They are nicely soft and the print is perfectly sharp. I only need decal setter chemicals under, correct position and that it is. You can see that the result is excellent and soft derivates are nicely visible. Just for your curiosity, I don't use decal softer chemicals at all. I chose this scheme primarily for snake marking. You can usually see shark teeth, but snake is unconventional. And one layer of a soft matte varnish. It will make oil painting and weathering easier, because this surface is like a sponge. I decided to assemble the cockpit after painting, because particles from airbrush usually make it dusty. This way will be nicely clean. I have pre-painted instrument panel in Eddard detail set, so why not to use it? Also, it is good to make cover glass from clear varnish. I like searching for fresh ideas and holographic foil for nails is precisely this case. You can buy the whole set for one or two dollars. I cut out the knitted shape from a thin plastic sheet and glued the pink green holographic foil with a clear varnish. It is fun to play with it. If you flatten the tires, then you must glue them in the precise rotation into the ground. The transparent plexiglass can help check orientation. If you do not like weathering, then I am deeply sorry, because this plane can be dirty like no other modern aircraft. The major culprit is crazy 30mm Avenger Gatling gun with more than 1000 rounds. So the fun begins. I use mix of oil paints and white spirit. Try to mix it highly dilute, soft and brownish. You can see that the wings has shading, but it looks dead. It needs accumulated dirt. I am making rivet lines and panel lines more pronounced with an oil wash.
and you can see that I'm making it more pronounced from the bottom side. This looks already more interesting. You can see that the wash was nicely soft and made subtle weathering. You are probably used to wipe all excess wash out of the model, but not this time. I am blending and cleaning only small areas around the rivets with a flat synthetic paintbrush and white spirit. This way you can nicely control the shading effect and make the surface more inconsistent. You can imagine the flat surface without rivets and shading. All the previous hard work is now visible. You can possibly paint the whole bottom of the aircraft with a black oil paint and still it will be realistic, so do not worry about making it dirty. You do not have uh, other opportunities to play with dirt like here. Ok, maybe SU-25 can be also interesting. I told you, you couldn't see engines under the large covers, at least from the top side. In my opinion, the engine panel lines are too pronounced. This is not good, so I'm trying to smooth them with a light grey wash. How to make scratches on the light grey surface? First, try to use even lighter grey paint. Try to avoid black or brown, this is not Orc Bomba from Warhammer 40k. I meant try to avoid brown for scratches, but you can use these shades freely for few leaks or residual gunpowder. I am making small splatters of a diluted acrylic paint. If you blow air from airbrush into the paintbrush fibers, it will make a lovely, filthy surface. In the nose section is a connector for air refueling, so therefore, some fuel leaks. And more crazy weathering from the bottom side caused by a Gatling gun. I use a black oil paint and white spirit. Honestly, I try to moderate myself here, because it could be vastly more disgusting. One of the last detail is leather into the cockpit. This one is unsatisfactory and we can make a better one from extra parts and metal tubes. The parts have only a few millimeters, so it is a nerve wracking. I already built the same model a few years ago, but I do not have a video of it. It was before YouTube, therefore I came up with the idea, what about trying to make a new and better one. Honestly, it took more time than I expected. Primarily the rivets and all the complex shapes were tough. The 3D printed engines are a lovely detail and it looks easy. However, it wasn't. I made a few failed prints and took some time to modify the 3D model for 72 scale 
and set everything correctly. Even after all these issues, I finish it and I'm glad that I have this monster in my collection. I hope I don't discourage you from this model too much and hopefully you will try it also. Ok, that's all for today, thank you for watching and see you next time. Oh wait, I heard something, it sounds like...